Hi everyone, I'm Mikey from University Centre Ask and Brian, and in this video we're going to talk about all things personal statements. So what is a personal statement and what makes a good personal statement? What do people look for in a personal statement? So you might know that the personal statement is a part of your application for higher education. So we're just going to take the first few minutes to talk about the application process as a whole before we look in detail on the personal statement. So the first thing to talk about is UCAS, the Universities and Colleges Admissions Service. This is a central application service where you fill in an application form on UCAS, just one application form, and this gets sent, um, the same application form gets sent to all of your choices. It is the only method of entry to UK degree programmes. There's some exceptions, so if you're applying for music, drama, dance, conservatoires, they have a different process for um, applying, but for the majority of courses in the UK, you go through UCAS. There's so much choice when it comes to courses and providers in the UK, over 50,000 courses offered by 395 providers. All of them are listed on UCAS, so you can see the entry requirements in a little bit more detail, and in the end, you can apply to them through UCAS. You can apply for up to five universities and colleges or courses. So you can apply for one course or similar subject to five different universities or colleges. Or you can apply to one institution if you really want to go to one place and apply for five of their courses or a mixture of the two. There are some restrictions on that, so if you're thinking of applying for medicine, dentistry or veterinary medicine, you can normally only apply to for four of them and then use your fifth choice for something else. And you can normally only apply to either Oxford or Cambridge. So UCAS takes the best part of a year to go from starting an application right through to starting university or college in the September. So we look very quickly at the timeline for 2021 entry, so if you wanted to start university or college in 2021 next year, you can submit your completed UCAS application from the 6th of September this year, so you can start a UCAS application now, but you can only submit it from the 8th of September. If you're applying for medicine, dentistry, veterinary medicine, or Oxford or Cambridge, your deadline is the 15th of October, so you need to get your application submitted to UCAS by then. If you're applying for anything else, you need to get the application submitted by the 15th of January 2021 for equal consideration, so you're not penalised for late applications. If you do that, all being well, on the 6th of May 2021, if you submit by the 15th of January, Providers will get their decisions back to you by the 6th of May. On the 5th of July, if you don't have any offers or any offers that you'd like to accept, you can go into clearing. And finally, on the 19th of August 2021 is A-Level Results Day. So that's when your UCAS will change to say whether you've been accepted and you're going. Um, to university or college in September or if you're in clearing and you might need to have a look at any vacancies still available. So that's an overview of the deadlines according to UCAS. It's important to highlight your uh, college or school might have their own internal deadlines for the UCAS application so that they can maybe check your application and also write a reference. So although there's UCAS deadlines, make sure that you're meeting your internal deadlines as well. Looking at the application form, this is what it looks like. They will ask for your personal details, so contact details, um, and especially an email address that you have access to and you can check regularly. The UCAS application will also ask for your choices, so what are you choosing to study and where, are your choices, your five options, four or five options. I've done a separate video on that, how to make that decision, so if you're still torn, make sure you check that out. 
your education, so all of your previous places of study, so all the schools and colleges that you've studied at, and all the qualifications you, you've either achieved or are studying currently. Also need to put details of your employment, so whether that's full or part-time work, there's a section there to put all those details. Your personal statement, subject of this video, so why have you chosen the subject um, and what makes you a good candidate, we'll come on that later. Your reference, so this is normally someone that knows you really well, either a teacher or tutor or an employer, um, they will need to submit a reference. Also have the opportunity to put down some additional information, so if you've been part of a widening participation scheme, such as Routes to Success, if you're applying for um, Ask and Brian, University Centre Ask and Brian. And also there's a chance to put down any mitigating circumstances, so any difficulties, barriers or hardships that you've faced while studying. Finally, student finance. So making sure that the UCAS application is tied and communicating with your student loans, company application and tuition fee um, information so that providers know how you're planning to pay for your higher education. So that is a whistle stop tour of the application process as a whole, but if we look now specifically at the personal statement. So we'll start with what it is, what is it in detail. It is, as I've mentioned, a key part of the UCAS application, and this really is one of the, the most important parts because this is the really the only part that you can directly affect. This is a free text box where you can put whatever you like, really. It is around a page of writing, give or take. Specifically, it's 4,000 characters on 47 lines. If you don't know how much that is, that is around 400 words around a page of writing, writing so not, not really a lot of space to play with. You write one statement to go to your choices. So you only have one UCAS application form, and that is sent and copied to, to everywhere. So it's one statement for all. As I mentioned before, this is your chance to sell yourself and really stand out. This is what you can directly affect and do and write about yourself and your achievements and sing your praises. It's important that this is an original piece of work, so your own work, um, and that it's personal. It's called a personal statement for a reason. So this is a statement all about you, your motivations, passions, and what you are all about. Why is it so important? Well, this is because it is, it, we want to get to know who you are. Admissions tutors want to know who they're accepting into the course. They want to know that you, as an applicant, know what you're getting yourself in for. You've researched all the course um, and the subject areas that you know, what it's all about, you're passionate about it, you have uh, reasoned and explained why you want to do what you want to do. They also want to know that you are um, a great candidate, that you have all the skills and experience needed to succeed not only in the, the course but also maybe in the career if you've got that specifically in mind as well. And at the end of the day it's important because it really does contribute to whether you are made an offer or not. Sometimes it can be the, the difference between one candidate or the other depending on what they've put in their personal statement. So it really is important and you can't just be complacent with, with, with this. You, you, it's important to put the, the effort and the time into the personal statement. So what should a personal statement have in it? Well, it should explain why you're choosing what you're choosing and it should give across a bit of passion um, to show that you're really interested in what you're applying to study. You should explain um, in your personal statement what motivates you, why are you choosing what you're deciding to choose. And we recommend that at least 50% of it relates directly to what you're choosing. So that can be um, your academic, sort of what you're studying, so that, that related to your course that you're doing now, how does that relate to what you want to do, but also your social and cultural interests. How do they relate directly to your course of choice? 
So that's what it should contain. Now, how do we how do we get started? What do we, what do we need to think about? I mentioned this before. I'll mention it again. You need to make sure that you have firstly researched the courses that you know in and out what you're really applying for. Think fit as an as an essay. Really, make sure that you've planned out exactly what you're going to say. Where I mentioned, it's only. A page of writing that can fill up so quickly so make sure that you've planned it meticulously and that you know what each paragraph is going to say. Statements and quotations are, are a bit of marmite when it comes to personal statements. Some people absolutely lovely, love them, some people absolutely hate them. The important thing is you don't need to you don't need to start with with a quote or a statement although it might sound and, and seem uh, really smart and intellectual. It's not that. That isn't necessarily the case. So you don't have to put them in. This might be the first piece of writing where you're writing about yourself, you're selling your skills and experiences. And you're going to have to do this in job applications and other applications in the future. So it can be really helpful to just go through this process that will help you and teach you things for later in life. So hopefully you can see the slide. These are some things that you will want to think about when coming and approaching your personal statement. So on the, the right of the slide, you can see some, some subjects, some areas to include in your personal statement, and especially when planning your personal statement. You're going to want to think about why you are applying for this course, and it's a personal reason and motivation. Why are you wanting to write this application to be accepted onto this course? And why does it, why does it interest you? Why do you want to wake up every morning to study this course? Because that's that's essentially what you're signing up to do. So why does it interest you? Why does it why does it motivate you? What skills and qualities do you possess? And try to match them to the skills and qualities that the institutions that you're applying for require. What experiences and achievements do you have? So do you have any work experience? Do you have any placement experiences? Have you achieved anything either in school or college or outside? Admissions tutors will want to hear all about them. Link to that, any extracurricular activities. So anything that makes you a rounded person. They want to know who, who you are um, outside of school and college. They want to know that you're going to engage in student life as much as, as, much as anybody. So make sure that you're putting down your other interests and passions as well. Make sure you mention them. And finally, if you have an idea of what you want to do in the future, if you have a reason, a specific reason for going on to study higher education, maybe because you need it, it's a stepping stone for something, make sure you're mentioning that as well. In all these cases, make sure that you're backing what you say with examples and evidence. It's quite easy to claim that you have certain skills, that you have certain experiences and you have certain qualities but make sure that they're backed up with evidence. And if there's anything uh, interesting, unique, special, if there's anything that you have, you possess, and you know that other people don't know, uh, make sure that you're, that you're mentioning that in your personal statement as well, because it makes you unique and it makes you stand out. So when we're talking about evidence and we're talking about examples, we need to make sure that we're making it relevant to what we're, what we're applying for. An easy way to do this is the ABC method. So think about the action, what you've done, the benefit, what you've gained from it, and course relevant, how is that going to help you in higher education? And we'll come on to that in a little bit more detail now. So first, action. What is it that you have done? Maybe if we're, if we're thinking about work experience, if, you, if you've gone on to have a two-week placement maybe, say in the Asking Brian Wildlife Park. Say, this is what I've done. Now the benefit, so you've done that, you've had work experience, how has it helped you? What have you gained from it? So you might say, I've developed a deeper understanding of factors considered in enclosure design. So what have you, what have you gained? What skills, qualities, knowledge have you received from doing what you've done? And finally, that's all great, but how does how is it going to help you in the future? How is that going to help you with your course? So you might say that your deeper 
uh, understanding of enclosure design will help you with a uh, certain modules that are covered in the degree because you already have an understanding. A key point with this is that I've already mentioned that you have one application form, one statement that goes to all of your choices, your five choices. So although it's great to make it course uh, relevant or subject relevant, make sure that you're not going into too much detail about uh, what's offered where, because although something might be offered, one, one institution might require something, another might not or might not offer that as well. So make sure that you're writing for all of your choices, not just with one particular one in mind. So that's how to approach the examples. So when you're backing up with evidence, a hard one is starting. I know that starting a personal statement is quite difficult, but a personal statement is that it is personal. So make sure that you're not really using cliches if you can help it. You can see on this slide that there's a lot of overused openings that send admissions tutors uh, to sleep really because they've read it so many times. So make sure if you can help it, try not to try not to use these. You don't want to give an admissions tutor a reason not to read all the way through. So if you can be original, but yet yeah, honest with yourself, do that. So some do's, some, some what to do when you're writing your application and your personal statement, do use the right language. So this is a formal document, you are applying for a place at university or college, so make sure that you're, you're not using slang, you're not really using um, acronyms, and that you're using proper uh, language. Draft, draft and draft some more. You can never draft too much and make sure that you're getting people to to read it and check it for you as well. Make it relevant, we've mentioned that um, just before, so make sure that when you're giving examples, make sure that they're, they're backed up um, and that it's quite clear how your examples and how what you've done is gonna help you with your course and your future career, if that's relevant. Be honest and original. So. Try not to use what other people have done or said or other people's ideas. Be honest with uh, what you write to the provider and institution, but also be honest with yourself. And be sure of your choice. It'll be you that is submitting this application and it'll be you that might be starting university or college and studying for two, three, four, five years. So make sure that you are happy with what you've written and you're happy with where your application is going. So that's some do's, some, some don'ts, some things not to do in a personal statement. Number one, if I could bold and, and underline this, I, I would, but don't plagiarize. So do not copy other people's work. We'll touch on this later, but this is a big, a big no-no. Don't overshare. So as I mentioned, this is a formal document. This is gonna be read by uh, maybe one, two, maybe even three admissions tutors. So although it is a personal statement, Try not to, to overshare and, and include details that you don't want other people to know. Don't rush. So if you're watching this over summer, you've got plenty of time, um, but don't leave it to the last minute. If you can plan and do a little bit often, that's a great way to approach this. Approach it like you would a piece of coursework. And as I mentioned, don't write for just one course or provider. You will have one personal statement that goes to your five choices. So try not to make it as specific. Make it relevant to all places and all courses that you're applying to. And don't forget to check spelling and grammar. If you're typing directly into the UCAS application, they don't check your spelling and grammar. So I'd recommend uh, typing it in a Word document first and getting it checked there, get other people to check it for spelling and grammar before copying it into the UCAS application tool. So, a little bit of a, of a game, you can either pause them as I, as I read them, but is this a true statement? True or false? Personal statements are a formality, tutors don't actually read them. Do you think this is true? Do you think this is false? Of course, I wouldn't be making this video if it was true. 
Personal statements are incredibly important. I mentioned that they contribute quite significantly sometimes between whether you are made an offer or not. So they are important. And as I mentioned, this is the only part of the application that you have complete control over. So make sure you're giving it the, the time and effort and attention that it deserves. I've given this one away. The UCAS Supply software has spelling and grammar checks. Is that true or false? Were you listening? It is false, as I mentioned. So the UCAS application uh, tool won't spell check and won't grammar check. So make sure that you're putting it into a Word document first and then copying it once it's all been checked and you're happy that it all makes sense. On average, students draft their personal statement seven times. Do we think that's true or do we think that's false? That is true. So remember this is an, an average. Some students will do more than seven, some students will do less than seven, but practice really does make perfect. So make sure that you're using all the resources available and really go through if something doesn't make sense, if something is, is repeating what you've already said, you, you make sure that you're doing something about it. You've only got a, a page of writing to really sell yourself. So make sure that every word counts and you can do that through drafting. You've got 4,000 characters, 47 lines, and you can save characters by not using paragraphs. Is that true or false? So technically it's true, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. You have 4,000 characters, 47 lines, so there's nothing stopping you from writing, just keep writing so it's just a bulk of text. But remember that your admissions tutors, so the people that are deciding whether to give you an offer or not, will be reading hundreds, thousands of personal statements. And so it's all about not wanting to give them a reason to stop. If, if it's difficult to read, either through spelling or grammar mistakes or just the structure, it can, it can make admissions tutors kind of switch off and, and not take in exactly what you're saying. And we, we, it's not good to have that. So if you can afford a line here, a line there, it will really help you to, to help with your message and structure. Services that help write personal statements are checked by UCAS and that's absolutely fine to use. So you might have seen um, some, some software, some services that say we'll write your personal statement for you, we're all fine, UCAS say that's all good. Is that true or is that false? This is a big false. Never, never get someone else to write your personal statement, either a friend or family member or someone on the internet offering what they say is a legitimate service. They aren't legitimate services and personal statement is exactly that. It's, it's yours, it's personal. The institutions and providers want to know exactly who they are letting in. UCAS have software that spots uh, plagiarism and know what is being written uh, legitimately and what is being copied and written by someone else. So don't take the chance, write your own personal statement. Here we've got a quote from um, a personal statement. Uh, Ever since I accidentally burnt holes in my pyjamas after experimenting with a chemistry set on my eighth birthday, I have had a passion for science. Sounds unique, sounds very personal, but actually this was found when UCAS started using plagiarism software. They found it in 234 personal statements. They check, they really do check every single personal statement that's, um, that goes through UCAS, which is all of them. Um, so do not copy, don't take the chance, um, it's really not worth it. So they use a software called Copycatch, and this is a similarity detection services. Essentially what this means is that each personal statement that is submitted to UCAS is checked with uh, other personal statements that have been done in the past. They'll also check them against uh, personal statements that are currently going through the cycle, so people that are applying to universities and colleges um, in the same year as you. And they'll also um, look for similarities between known personal statements in through free and paid services, but also books and other websites as well. So they check a whole host 
of materials um, for similarities. They will flag similar personal statements and this will be reviewed by um, a fraud protection uh, team in UCAS and they'll make a decision whether to flag it as potentially um, fraud or not. If this happens, the applicant and the providers that they've applied to will be notified. In one year, 8,458 personal statements were flagged and 1% of all applications are identified as fraudulent. So people are caught out and it's not worth it. When providers are notified and you're notified if you um, are flagged as potentially a plagiarised personal statement, it's up to the provider to make a decision about what to do. In higher education, plagiarism is a very serious matter. It's all about, uh, higher education is all about new ideas and new concepts. And so for people to copy other people's ideas, copy other people's writings in higher education is a big no-no. So it is really treated seriously. As I say, it's up to the provider to make a decision. Some of them will require you to submit a new personal statement, completely new, and they'll check that again. Other providers will reject an application based on plagiarism. So it's really not worth it. I know that starting a personal statement is really difficult. I've had to do two in my time. And yeah, starting a personal statement is was, was my biggest challenge. So in order to help you, we've come up with a, a tool, um, a document, a sort of a, a guide to starting a personal statement. If you run a phone, a smartphone over that QR code, um, you'll be taken to a link to the document. Or if you put this bit.ly uh, link into a browser, you'll also get a PDF of the guide to basically put in pen to paper. It guides you through uh, coming up with bullet points, keywords and ideas that you might want to include in a personal statement that you can then through a drafting process uh, just expand and create into a full personal statement. So if you're ready to start, I definitely have a look at that document and give it a go. So finally, some top tips from me when it comes to writing a personal statement. Do your research. So use tools and uh, guides available to you, such as the one that we've produced, but make sure that you're not copy and pasting. As I mentioned, that is very serious. So don't, don't, look, don't do that, but do look at what courses are requiring and see whether you can include what they're requiring into what you're writing. Do start early. So the worst thing to do is to rush a personal statement. So make sure that you're drafting, you've given yourself plenty of time to go through that process and give yourself deadlines. Approach it, like I mentioned, as a piece of coursework or an, a, or an essay. Make sure that you put in plans and structures into place that you know what you're putting where. Make sure that you're giving yourself uh, deadlines maybe a few days before your school or college deadlines um, that you need to apply for so that you're not uh, rushing or panicking last minute. Effort and time will pay off. You only get one chance to make a first good impression. And so make sure that you're giving it the time, effort um, that your personal statement and your UCAS application as a whole deserves. It's your future. Um, make sure that you're putting the time in. And then finally, make sure that you're making the best decision for you. So I mean this not only in your UCAS application, make sure that you're applying for courses and institutions that you're genuinely happy and feel comfortable doing. If you've got a passion for something, make sure that you're applying for the right reasons for you. But also in your personal statement, make sure that you're including things that show who you are. Make sure that you're being honest with the institutions and providers but also yourself with what you include. So that's all from me. If you have any questions at all about anything that I've mentioned about personal statements, feel free to whack me an email at inquiries at askham-brian. Also, if you've got two minutes to spare, we'd really appreciate your feedback on this video. So again, if you run your phone camera over that QR code, you'd be taken to a feedback form or put that bit.ly into a browser. We'd really appreciate to know what uh, this video did well, if there's anything that you really like, if there's anything you didn't like, but also if there's any subjects or things that we could help out with in future videos, we'd really appreciate to know that. Until next time, thank you and goodbye.